I want to take a few minutes today and talk about carving with a draw knife. So putting curves or some sort of non-flat, non-linear shape to wood using this tool. This is a case where for, for contouring, a beveled down draw knife is going to be the way to go. So the bevel here is going to face the workpiece. And I've chosen a nice piece of rift sawn walnut that's nice and clear to rough out a spatula. It's a good exercise that will really illustrate the capabilities of the draw knife and a little bit of the limitations as well. I've selected this wood very carefully to make sure that it's going to be somewhat of a, a, a productive, if not pleasant, experience for carving. Not every piece of wood is going to take nicely to a blade like this, and um, don't just assume it's the tool, often it is the piece of wood. So to begin, I'm first going to carefully examine my stock here and try to visualize the item within it um, for, the, for the best capture of grain, but also the, when the grain flows through the shape of the object, it will cut much cleaner and be easier to carve as well. So that's another reason to carefully study the wood and learn how to read the grain as best you can. I'll make a few just quick sharpie lines to show you what I'm seeing in here. In the average direction, I guess, of the grain that I'm seeing is what I'm drawing here. So it's mostly straight here, and then it kind of sweeps that way. And this one, it's not as pronounced. It's a little bit wavy, but it does have a very subtle sweep this way. And that's just a rough bandsaw cut, so it's hard, kind of hard to appreciate that. Well, so what, what I have here is... On this edge, the grain starts sweeping this way, and on this edge, the grain starts sweeping this way, which are opposite directions. So I can't capitalize on grain sweep that's uniform and get a really clean cut. Um, basically, I could go at this any, any of four different ways and get a good spatula out of it. And then on the two wide faces of this board, Basically, the grain runs pretty straight, slightly, very slightly askew to the sides of the board, but not enough to be a significant concern. So I think I might actually have an easier time putting the business end of the spatula on this, on this end because with grain that's diving this way and also sweeping up this way, if I try to carve a spatula, um, Bill, what do you call that? Uh, blade. Um, what I'll have is tear out on one side, no matter what I do, since it looks more straight and even on this side. I think it'll be minimized, so I can just start shaping that blade. I'm always, almost always going to operate a draw knife bevel up or devil, bevel down at a skew. So I'm turning it to a diagonal presentation to the material like this. And I'm going to contact the material with the corner that's close, closest to me. And as I pull back, I'm also going to pull sideways and slice. Looks like that. And I'm going to do the opposite skew and slice here. This is absolutely effortless in this walnut. I'm starting on the corners because I'm not having to take, that's almost four inches wide and trying to plow through four inches of wood, of dry wood all at once can be a, a lot to try to deal with. So I'm taking corners off. Now I just have this little narrow bit in the middle. I may need to repeat that process. So skew and slice right hand side left hand side middle so here's what i have so far and i'm going to get in when i have a um, less than a quarter inch thickness left right here at the leading edge is when i'm going to stop 
I don't need to go back quite so far anymore. Notice when I work from this side over to this side, see how that skew and slice gradually changes. Start this side and it just changes. For me, with enough experience, it becomes automatic. I'm just on autopilot. So that's tapered down to about a quarter inch. It doesn't need to be real consistent yet. So the next bit of uh, carving here is the is the most difficult part because I, I have to make this dip down and then back up. Let me try to draw that. So I need a, a fairly thin spatula blade and it's going to dip down and then kind of dip back up. So I'm taking off all this right in here and at the basically near the bottom dead center somewhere in there there's an imaginary line and I'll have to cut toward that line from the front and toward that line from the back. I can't just go in and back out because I'll start to engage the grain wrong and it'll start to tear. And We'll see that as it happens. Now to take this part off it's going to be tricky and I have to push cut. So I'm going to start back here. Once again work the corners first. Skew and slice. Oh, see that started to tear. So it started as a cut and that tore. And I have to be careful not to let that tear run too far. It'll break off part of my part of the side of my spatula there. So Yep, so that's starting to tear much more quickly on that side than this side. And that's breaking off. And that's, like I said, near the bottom dead center somewhere, it's going to start to tear. That's what's happening. So now I have to come back the other direction. I'm going to push cut, but I'm also going to skew and slice, starting on the corners. I'm going to have to kind of use these little jabby short strokes. And there again, I got to that bottom part of the curve and it's starting to tear going the other way. So I have to be careful. It doesn't need to look pretty right now, so that's starting to tear this way. And the more it tears, the more easily the wood tears, the more using a, an, an um, accentuated slicing motion will help clean that up. That's true of the skew too. The more you can skew and the more you can slice, the cleaner it will end up being. Draw knife is only a rough out tool for me for this process, generally. I'm not going to try to get down to clean finish cuts with this. I'm going to go back to the other side. chunky there still. I'll do one more round. On the inside here. It's all breaking off. Time to go the other direction. One reason that I clip the corners on draw knives that I make so it's at a kind of a 45 there instead of having a hard square corner 
cutting like this, a hard square corner would leave deep striations there, kind of gouge marks. So this helps to minimize that. Of course, you can modify any draw knife that way. Not going for perfection, just something that would eventually work as a spatula. If a little crude. Okay, that's good enough for the blade portion. Now I will shape the handle. I do the blade first because that's generally where the most force is going to be applied. If I've already created this little neck here and I'm using heavy force, if I'm working at normal speed, I use a lot more force and I risk breaking the uh, spatula at the neck. So I prefer to do this part first. I can work faster and more aggressively. And then I will shape the handle down and I'm going to roughly show you what I see here. And I'm not going to try to put a perfectly centered handle. I'm going to let the grain determine the handle shape. It's going to be probably at a slight angle, possibly slightly off center, but that's uh, something that gives our work a little bit of interest. And I don't mind it a bit. So just getting a, an approximate center line showing you what I see here or, or what hopefully will take shape in fairly short order. So that's the approximate shape I'm going to go for. Right here, these concave areas, these inside curves, that's where a bevel down draw knife is really going to make this easier to carve versus a bevel up. In fact, this portion right here, this would have been easier with a bevel up draw knife. I could have gotten it flatter with fewer facets. Not a big deal. Bevel down did just fine. So shaping the handle, I'm going to clamp that on edge. and. I'm going to see how this wood behaves. If it splits predictably, I can save myself a bunch of cuts by taking, well, let's just, let's try it. So I took a real heavy bite and it's starting to tear. Now I'm going to crank my draw knife and see if that'll just split me off a big piece. Sure enough. That's why I build draw knives with stout frames so I can crank on them without bending the tangs. There we go. That was a big split. Let's pick up one of these pieces. So I'm splitting off something like that rather than taking 20 cuts, right? Or 10 cuts to do the same thing. Saves time, saves elbow grease and elbow ligaments. Now, as I get a little closer to my line, I'm going to be a little more cautious. And in general, if you're getting tears, it's a, a way to be cautious is to start way back at the end here and then slowly work your way forward. Instead of trying to start up here and cut all the way out of the end, start at the end, work your way forward with little nibbles. But again, always keep it at that skew and slice. Here, I'm going to find the limitation, the concave limit of this particular draw knife right here. There we go. That's the most concave curve that this particular draw knife can get. Starting to tear coming out. It's almost like I've made a bunch of spatulas with this draw knife and my mind's eye knew about what curve to expect there. Since it was tearing there, now I could push cut 
clean that up. Or if I have enough room to turn it around, it's always easier to pull cut. Come back, clean up those tears. And I'm not gonna do too much on one side before switching to the other side. Split off some big pieces. Starting to tear here, so that's a good situation to start way at the back. Just careful little nibbles. Work my way forward, and this isn't necessarily about making a spatula. All these same principles apply. Making a, a table leg, an axe handle, a walking stick. Here to clean up. Now I can take out some of the bulk here. Let me draw another little sharpie line. I want to keep the top more or less and take out a bunch of bulk from the bottom here. So I'm going to slim that to about two thirds of the of the thickness that we have there. Flip it over like so. So when you start at the end, I talk about taking these nibbles at the end. There's a little bit of a downward slope. And since the grain is running more or less, call it horizontal, and we have this little downward slope, I'm exposing end grain here. If I tried to go into that exposed end grain, it would immediately tear and snag. But if I cut this way, I have an end grain exit. So a mnemonic I always recommend is enter side grain, which is basically what I have here. This surface is basically parallel to the grain. So I'm gonna enter the more side grain aspect and exit out of this exposed end grain that I just intentionally created. And then it, it finishes clean right there instead of tearing. If it starts to tear again, then come back. Give yourself a little more end grain exposure that you can exit from. Right up here, this is a spot that tricks a lot of beginners. I absolutely must come this direction. That's, a, that's an end grain exposure. If I were to try to come this way, I'm not even gonna try it. It's just immediately gonna tear. Well, let me, yeah, see, that just split off. So I could push cut this, this direction, but if I have enough room to clamp, and still get, I can still get to it with the blade. I prefer to, to cut on the pull almost always. And what I'm doing is entering the more side grain aspect, exiting from the end grain. So whether I push or pull, the blade has to travel this direction or it's gonna tear and snag right there. Cause big splits. And I'm just about at the point where I'll switch either to a spoke shave or if I'm going to finish this up with abrasive methods, go that route. 
but that shows you how to do basic expedient shaping work with the draw knife on an amenable piece of wood always remember <laughs> A good way to improve your, your prospects of having an amenable piece of wood for carving is to break down the log yourself. So check out some of my other videos if you want to see that process. And then stick around in the future for seeing different ways of getting this to the finish line. Thanks for watching.